So is it working now? Oh, you can work any time you want to. Really? Okay, so are we working yet or not? Well, Okay, so uh, Hey, we've got sound <laughs> Will, how are ya? Aussie Welsh, how are ya? B-Rye, welcome How are you people? Um, few issues this morning getting the stream started Okay fam, so we're in Western Australia, okay, uh, huge shout out to our sponsors Millard Marine, Qualia Reels and also Rode Microphones, if you want to get serious about your streaming, get serious about your audio, okay, it's far more important than you know what the stream looks like, uh, you can't really tell on the phone and our content has gone up a notch since we've uh, been sponsored by Rode Microphones. Okay, so we're in the southwest of Western Australia. I've been fishing this area since I was a kid. So my earliest, one of my earliest recollections of uh, fishing was upstream, okay? Uh, we have had a very good winter. What it is at the moment, this is the Blackwood River, okay? Uh, this is a fairly tidal stream. Now I don't know whether you can see out in the middle here. Low tide this morning was at about uh, quarter past five. We're three days off the new moon phase. So this high tide should start filtering soon. But if you look out in the middle there, I don't know whether you can see it on the camera, but I'll show you in a second. We've got a lot of water that looks like it's bouncing up and down. That's the salt coming in, pushing the fresh water back. So as the salt comes in, we'll have whiting, trevally, Australian salmon, uh, juvenile snapper, rudder, rudder, rudder. The list is quite endless. And what we're going to do today is, um, on Monday, we made up a few whiting rigs. Uh, with those whiting rigs, I've brought them here today. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the whiting rigs that I've made to try and catch whiting, obviously. Um, and on top of that, tomorrow morning, we're going to have a very serious uh, fly fishing session with a good friend of mine who's going to take us out in the boat. And then once he takes us out in the boat, last time we went out, we caught and released over 45 black brim in about three hours, which we're hoping to achieve again, okay? And then, uh, you know, it's just a question of trying to um, sort of provide the content in relation. Uh, 
So um, this afternoon we're going to go and um, fish for brim. So this is the plan. This morning what we're going to do, okay, is we're just going to fish here till about one o'clock and then um, from there I'll have lunch. We'll go to the next spot. The biggest issue that we've got is reception, okay? And um, we should have reception. I went there the other day and did a little field test and made sure that um, everything was uh, okay. So unfortunately, um, content is a uh, <laughs> dependent on signal and in WA, the signal's dependent on weather, usually. So, you know, it's just one of those things, isn't it? All right, so let's get started. I don't think we're gonna see any action for at least another half hour to hour, right? And then uh, what we'll do is uh, just play it by ear. That's all you can do. A lot of people like to bang on when they go fishing about, you know, specific species and all that sort of stuff. Right, we're just gonna come here. We're gonna enjoy the moment today. And we're just going to see what's out there. You can catch everything from stingrays that are four foot wide here to uh, Trevally, King George, all sorts of stuff. So let's just see what involves, eh? Timmy, how are you, mate? Welcome, buddy. Let me just turn the volume down. Right, so the video is sorted. Okay, audio is sorted. We've got the wide screen, which is good. Um, let's get started. So, what it is today. Now, I've got two rods here. I've got my softer action rod, which I use for brim. Okay, I'll just show these. So both of these are about six foot long. Okay, this one has the brim rig on it. We'll be using that later today. All right, now if I put a bend in these rods, Okay, let's just do it like that. So see how the rod where my thumb is bends further down the rod than the one where my middle finger is, right? Uh, this is the one that I'll be using for whiting today. Uh, a lot of it's personal preference, right? But what I'm going to do here is we may well even try and get some soft plastic fishing in today. So if we do, um, what I'm going to do is I need to be able to hook up on the fish straight away. Whiting, when they bite, are much like a machine gun going off. It's like brrr, and then if you don't have a rod that can um, hook up straight away, right, um, you'll miss a lot of bites, right? So, let's just get started. Uh. All right, let's go. Whoops. What I'll do is I've got some of the rigs here. Oh, bugger. Uh, well, just your typical sort of, it's like late winter weather at the moment, mate. So, um, yeah, just excuse me for a second. I've just got to duck to the car and grab the uh, rigs. I'll just be back in a second. Do do do.
Right. So. Hello, Garley. How are you? Manzi, how are you, bud? Rightio. So. What we've got here is this is one of the rigs that we made on Monday. Okay, welcome Manzi. Now as per usual, you don't need to watch me fish. There would be nothing more boring. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna show you the water. Huh? Oh, this is a plastic bag, Manzi. Right, we don't leave rubbish at our spots because rubbish kills fish, kills birds, kills everything. Okay, so this is the little rig that we made on Monday. Well, if it was raining, man, so you'd probably see droplets on the camera, mate. Right, so here we go. So basically what we've got is we've got a little channel sinker down the bottom. I've got two dropper loops without terminal tackle. And then what I've got is I've got beads onto these long shank hooks. Let's just uh, tie this to our rig. And then we'll start. I'm not going to bother using two rods today. I'm just going to use one. So, this is uh, a fairly long rig, but you've got to remember when you use rigs, fam, especially with shorter rods, what's going to happen is that's going to be on the bottom, and these two hooks are only going to be within about six inches of the bottom, where most of the fish are that we're targeting. Okay, so uh, that's basically the um, like method behind it. And what we've got, we've got a few little red beads there to sort of attract the whiting to us and it just tends to protect the hook a bit as well, okay? So, gonna start off with prawn. If we don't catch anything on prawn, we'll move to fish. If we don't catch anything with fish, we'll move to something else. Uh. All right, so got some nice coral prawns here sometimes coral prawns work sometimes river prawns work it just depends on the day you know so what you've got to do is you just got to try and um, just got to try and figure it out basically uh, this water is really starting to clear up which means the salt water yes yeah, yeah I saw it mate And uh, just got to figure it out. So we're just going to put very, very small amounts of bait on. Right, oh, we've got a dolphin in front of us here, fam. It was over there before. They came in about half an hour ago. So if the dolphins are in here, it means that fish are in here. But I don't think we'll catch anything till the dolphin goes away. Right. What we're going to do is we're going to try and cast to the tide line out here. As the salt water comes in through the narrow channel, it forms a line around here. So we need to be able to cast over that to get to the fish. No, I didn't punt on the Melbourne Cup, Will. Yeah, the hunting's not a very high priority for me, mate. So yeah, I was too busy doing other stuff. 
So when you bait with these long shank hooks, a lot of people like to use them with worms. As long as you bait the point and the barb, right, you should have enough on there, right, to um, attract the fish. So that's all we need. See, just a little bit of bait there. Let's see how we go. Hey, Culpable, how are you, bud? Welcome back, Todd. Right, that's my first cast. First cast, I'm just gonna take it steady, steady and see what's out there. Right, next cast will cast further. Sometimes you've just gotta give them time to sort of build up, okay? If I try a big, long cast early on, it could tangle the line. Benton, how are you, bud? All right. <sighs> Me personally, I like to enjoy fishing. So I'm uh, just gonna chill out and just wait for a bite, really. And what I'll do on the next cast is I'll try and cast it further out. <sighs> It's gonna take, I think, about half an hour to an hour before the tides are right to get like uh, a bite, if you know what I mean. But we're here at the right time in the morning, so. Hey, Bricklayer, how are you? John, welcome to the stream. Yeah, there's always a catch there though. John, you gotta catch something first, don't you? Rightio. Now that our line's wet, what we'll do is we'll just bring this back in. I think I might have a bit of weed on here, which is a bit of a pain. But let's have a look. Yep, knew it. Go on, get off there. So we've still got a bit of weed and that in here from the fresh water. This salt water's not quite in yet, so. All right, let's try and go out a bit further. Rightio, that's on the current line, so we should have a chance of a fish now. Yeah, good bricklay yourself. Ah, uh, let's try that. So, I'll give you the rundown. So basically on this current line, right, what we've got here, if you see this current line, that line is where all the salt is, and between us and the current line is the fresh water. So the mouth is actually narrower than this area here. So as this fills with salt, that line will come towards us a bit closer, and that's when we'll start getting the fish. Oh, we've got a bit of rain coming. Hems the brakes. Yeah, good bricklayer yourself. And as is always the case with fishing, right, what you can do is you come down here, best laid plans, you just gotta wait for the fish to turn up, don't you? Nah, more weed, that's not good. Rightio, we go again. If we have no joy here, fam, what we'll do is we'll move upstream, but usually this is your first port of call when it comes to fishing for the whiting and that, you know? Yep, more weed. Oh, deer season. Okay, Daz Dan, how are you, mate? Rightio. So, I don't want to try and cast too hard with the rig because we might flick our bait off. So, let's just go here. A bit more air time. 
Oh, rightio. That one's actually in the tide line, fam. So we should have a shot here. And sure enough, I missed a bite. <laughs> oh, oh, first fish of the day, fam. That was a whiting. Now see what happened there? I actually hit the tide line and we started getting fish. So let me try again. That was a good bite. Right. So there are fish out there. I think our hooks will come up clean here. Yep. So, just as I suspected, the bottom hook, which is the one that usually gets the whiting, that's the one that had the hit. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, plonk that down there, grab another piece of prawn, and then if prawn doesn't work, what we'll do, okay, is... Uh, Right, defrost that. But that was a good bite. As soon as that hit the bottom, right, we had a hit. So let's just chuck that down here. Scissors there. Um, I always like to, um, I always like to fish uh, with all of my hooks baited. Okay, so even if there's one, unless I know there's a heap of fish out there, and I'll get a chance to catch another one. You know. Right, here, let's go again. Better. Right, we're right on the edge there. I think that bait fell off, but that's right, we'll put another one on. That was a good hit from that whining too, bugger. Anyway. Once this starts to fill up, it'll push all the fresh water out. Let's see how we go. And look, if we have no joy down here, fam, we'll just move upstream. Okay. All right. So, I did feel a slight bump when I cast that out. We lost both baits. So, let's just see how we go, eh? I might even swap over to the other rod in a minute, but we'll see how we go. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into two baits. Right, that is a lovely amount of bait on that for the fish. Uh, I could get close to it, Will, if I had my uh, long range gear, but this is all short range gear, mate. When you've got balanced fishing tackle, you would be amazed at what you can cast to. Okay. All right. Let's see what's happening there. Might have to, might have to go to a bigger sinker, fam, or put another one on. Yeah, that's not even holding bottom because of the current. That's all right. Righto. I'm just going to put another sinker on here so we have a bit more weight and that'll give us the extra distance that we need to reach that salt water. Right. 
right, let's get that there. It's funny, we're fishing, um, you know, water that's lucky if it's eight feet deep. We need to use four ounces of lead. Show, oh, shows you how much, um, no, 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 don't do that. Ah, gotcha. Uh, shows you how much water's rifling through here, doesn't it? Just um, I did crimp this, so I've got to uncrimp it, put the other sinker on, and then away we go. Right, yeah. There we go. The good thing about these sinkers, when they have the wire on the end, you can crimp a couple of them on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna double the weight here. There we go, lovely. That's nice. Bring that in here. Oh. Bring that in here. Okay, and now we should start getting onto the fish because we're going to be able to reach the salt water. Right, it's the same old story with fishing fam, you just got to figure it out, you know. Alright, so we had two ounces on there. Now we've got four ounces. How are they? Seagull. Right, so now what should happen? is we should be able to get this bait out into the salt and start getting onto the fish. Righto, we're in the salt water now, fam. So, much better. And now, as is the most part of fishing, it's gonna wait for a bite. So we have the chair here. I'm gonna plonk myself down and enjoy my rare luxury of having a day off fishing. Right. Uh, whoops. And let's see what happens. Yeah, the water here between that current line and us is a lot uh, murkier than the stuff in the middle, which usually means it's salt. Okay. I didn't bring any burley with me today. When you have a river like this, that's got so much water flow, if you throw burley out, it'll take the fish with it. So... Uh, As I said, I think it's going to be about half an hour to an hour before we start getting any bites anyway, so that should be seen, the um, receiver on the microphone. I don't know what happened with the audio this morning, so. And if we don't catch anything here, fam, we'll just move further down, if I can carry everything down there. Rightio, this is going to have a lot more weight on it because we've got two sinkers on the bottom. Right, but did feel a slight bump there. Hey, X-ray specialist punk, how are you, mate? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, typical, more weed, look at that. All the hooks are covered in weed, that's all right. 
It's part and parcel of it. Just got to work through it, famo. You got to remember too, when you're fishing, your rod and your reel and your line and all that, they're just tools. And what you need to do, sometimes you need to modify what you're using to be able to catch a fish, you know. So there is a lot of weed moving around. And when you've got a current line like that, where you've got the salt meeting the fresh, you'll it'll always trap the weed and that sort of stuff. So we might have to move in a minute, okay? Let's go again. Now that's interesting. The current line's moving further away. Should be coming in closer to us. Because the one time I did reach it was when we, hooked, we, we had a bite. Nice to see you in here, X-ray specialist punk. I was going to bring the kayak, but uh, I thought the tide would have been higher though at this time of the day. Yes, that upstream option might be sooner than we think, Fermo. Quite shocked that we haven't caught anything. And what you find with the current line, it'll go out, it'll come back in, it'll go out, it'll come back in. So once the salts come into the system, it'll push a lot of that fresh out. Oh, on you, Scotty. Where you heading to, mate? That's a big clump of weed, fam. A rather large clump of weed. <laughs> yep, always the same when you fish the edge of a current line. Alright, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to move up a bit, I think. That's just part and parcel of it. Wait till you see the size of this clump of weed that's going to come in, Fermo. How's the fishing been going for you in Perth, Scott? Have you been catching anything or? Hey! Big bad bronzy weed fish, this one. Look at that. Now what was that chasing after it? We've still got the um have we got the bait on there? Yeah we have, it's just that. It's going to be very hard to fish when fish are trying to bite through this. What we might do, let's just try a closer range presentation and hope that this salts underneath all this fresh water. Right, let's get another bit of bait. On mullet and boney brim. Oh, okay, interesting. 
Yeah, early season when the water's a bit murky, Scott, you might have a bit of a problem with lures, but uh, that's just the lay of the land, mate. It's even freshwater's the same, you know. Start of the season, a lot of people use baits and that sort of stuff, and then as it clears up, they'll go to lures, you know. Someone's just come in and had two casts and shot off. That's not really a good way to approach fishing, you know. One of the best ways to fish this area is to wade out in the shallows here, but unfortunately I still haven't got a little pod or anything like that that will allow me to do that. So, this current's starting to move in again. I'm going to put a bit more bait on like that. There we are, right on the edge. Morning, sir. I might go back and grab the kayak. Hey, sugar honey, how are you? Uh, we do, Alex, in the Southern Ocean, you get them a lot more than you do in the Indian Ocean. Um, they're not as prevalent here as the East Coast in New Zealand, apparently. So, uh, there are a couple of spots down south that you can catch them from the rocks. So all in all, um, they are around. You've just got to find them like anything. Harrison Island, yeah, good spot. But it's the same old story, Scott. You've got to find them, you know. Early season, you'll get the brim going down to the lower reaches, you know. Then as the fresh water recedes and the estuarine water recedes back upstream, you can catch them up as far as Midland and you'll get Mulloway up at Midland and everything. WA Fisheries, interesting Scott. Oh, that'll be good. Mark W, how are you bud? Welcome to the stream. Look, thanks to everyone that's tuned in to watch. Okay, uh, sorry that I haven't had more fish, but uh, it's a bit of a strange old day, you know? And me personally, I don't ever get deterred by much. I'll sit here and fish all day knowing that the next cast could be the fish of a lifetime, you know? So. But the salt water is just out of casting distance. We're just going to need to wait a little bit more for it to come in closer and then we should be okay, Fermo. I was going to bring my other rod, but, you know, hindsight's a good thing, I guess. I mean, I could bring the Calcutta out, but uh, I don't know. Hey, Gripper, how are you, bud? <laughs> Gripper USA, excellent. What I might do is I might pick up and shift and go right into the mouth there because that's where they come through. So we might even get some big flathead in there as well. We'll just see how it is here first and then we'll make a decision. So like anything, fam, one of the basic rules of fishing is fish are where you find them. Okay, so if you're not catching any, go and find them. Simple. And um, in rivers like this that are tidal, they'll move upstream and downstream with the water. So, like I said, we could well end up upstream, and if we do, what we'll do is we'll just um, fish for brim and that sort of stuff and see what else is around, you know. Now, I cast over here, and my rig is now over here, which means that the tide is coming in. And, uh, oh, here we go. So this tidal flow is just starting to um, get a bit closer. So within the next three to five minutes hopefully we'll get a cast out right on the edge of it and when we did cast into the salt before that's when we got that bite so okay so we got more um no i don't think there's as much weed on this as before yes there is <laughs> right A 
Look at all this weed on here, fam. You know that it's pretty uh, sticky when it stops the line going through your guides. So I have got the join. Well, that's fishing. Now I do have one bait on here. Right, I'm gonna cast this out and see if that's gonna get us anything. I won't bother rebaiting at the moment just because of the fact there's so much weed. Here we are, that's a bit better. All right, we've hit the salt. So, let's see if there's something out there. We've actually landed in the salt water. Can't feel any weed dragging on the line, come on. I'm only using a six foot fishing rod, which makes it a bit difficult to get distance, but we're using braid. We've doubled the weight of our sinker. So hopefully we can get something out there. And that's actually landed in the salt water. So, hey, a little stingray just in front of us, little eagle ray fam. So that's a good sign that your inlet and that sort of stuff is healthy. Stingrays are very important for the whole ecosystem. Okay. So they'll swim along and they'll clean up all the dead fish and other debris and that sort of stuff that's edible. All right, they're like the vacuum cleaners of the ocean, you know. All right, let's put on another bait. Might have to switch to muley, I think. Well, that's good. As soon as we hit the um, salt water then, right, and when we retrieved it, I lifted the rod tip to bring it in on the surface, we had one third of the weed that we had on the previous cast. So that's good, we'll work on from that, okay? Hey buddy. That water's quite warm compared to the outs. <laughs> Go on mate, get that bit of prawn. You're predominantly a fish eater, why would you want to hit that? You'll get you stuck in your throat. And what I'm doing here with all the shells and that sort of stuff, as this tide comes in and the salt water starts getting closer to the shore like that, it'll hopefully bring the fish in, you know? Be good if some juvenile salmon were in here, they could bring some um, fish to the surface for us, you know? Okay, so once again, very small bits of prawn. All I'm doing is really um, just baiting the point and the bend of the hook, really. I'm not really worrying about the long shank. That's all you need. There we go. Let's hope that we can get this out here. That's a small one. I've seen stingrays in here that are five, six feet across the wings, you know? So massive critters. Yes, Mark, this is spring, although we don't really have a spring anymore, mate. We usually have winter and then summer with the way things are going. That's a bit better. That's right on the edge. Uh. Yeah, that tide line comes in and it goes out. Yeah, I have Mark. I tidied the yard up yesterday and uh, just waiting for it to uh, sort out, you know.
Oh, Aussie Welsh, sometimes we're getting four seasons in one day, you know, so... Yeah. But the um, gardening streams will probably be starting next week. I had a, um, my neighbour has this South African vinca that goes the length of their property and then along the back fence and it invaded our place. So yesterday I took out two and a half trailer loads of a mixture of vinca and other stuff that I could have used for fertiliser, you know. But the vinca being what it is, it um, sends out the runners like vines, just a disgusting plant. Purple flowers, just you know, rubbish. Excuse me. And the weather we're having today, um, we're in November now. This is the sort of weather that you expect to get in sort of late August, early September. It's about 12 degrees. Looks like there's a bit of rain, you know? So that's just how it works. Oh, did you get that bit of prawn? No, oh, get off the line. Right, so the tide is definitely coming in. We cast out here and our bait and sinker has moved to the left. More weed, I didn't quite reach that tidal line. Yep, weed everywhere. Let's go again, it is starting to clear up though, which is good. We might have to go upstream and chase some brim, I think. No, we're into it now. We reached the salt water, I hope the bait stayed on. Let's see what's happening. Hey there, Fallen Angel. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, that's how it works. So... Normally when you fish for whiting in most of these tidal rivers, you just cast out into the open. And if they're there, they usually find you. Now that's interesting. I've cast here and our sinker and that hasn't moved. But yet when I cast out here, it gets dragged to the left. So there might be a little bit of an eddy in here. Right, so we'll just keep casting in here. That little stingray sticking around, so. How'd you go, mate? No good. Yeah, high tide's still a little ways off, but. No, never got a bite. Yeah, I had one, but only when I reached the salt water. So yeah, that tide line in there, you've got to be able to cast into that or you probably won't get anything. Yeah. A lot of fresh water in here at the moment, sir. Yeah, I sort of have too much luck when I come down here. Yeah. Oh. Best thing to do, just go around to the dog beach and try and cast as those little islands because they're getting heaps of tail around here at the moment. Are they? Yeah, but it's the same old story. You've got to wait for the weather to be right. You don't want to be out there when the tide comes in because you might not come back with the Southern Ocean. Yeah. <laughs> Gets very cold. <laughs> <laughs> I've come out there, mate, numb and blue up to here, you know. So yeah, but all oh, good no, fun.
bit down here. We're from Perth and we just stayed at the caravan park. And oh, lovely. We like it down here. And, uh, yeah, good part of the world, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, and fortunately not everyone's cottoned onto it yet, so, you know, holidays are pretty hectic, but that's everywhere, so. You live there? Oh, I'm from, a, uh, yeah, just around the area, yeah. so, yeah, you know. No, it's a nice part of the world to get down here and get away from the bloody city, that's Oh, sure. yeah, for sure, it's getting pretty bad, isn't it? Oh, sure. I've, all right, so you have a lovely day, sir. Yep. See, they found that young that little girl. Oh, did they? Where'd they find her? Um... A 36-year-old girl, uh, bloke, in a house in Carnarvon. Was he a bit tapped, or...? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, the cops must have got tipped off from somewhere, and they broke into the house, and this little girl was just um, sitting in the bedroom and said, my, my name's Cleo. Wow. Poor little kid. Oh, I'll tell you, mate. Yep. That, that poor little kid will never recover from it. Oh, pal, you know, the funny thing is... I mean, yeah, we can't really comment on it because, you know, people get offended, but something's got to get done, doesn't it? You know, like that's just... Found it, but gee, what, sort of conditions you're going to be in there what about the parents too, mate? Oh, All right, sir, have a lovely day. Yeah, we had a uh, four-year-old go missing in WA. And uh, there was a statewide search for her. She went missing from the blowholes at Carnarvon. And that gentleman just said they found her in a house in Carnarvon that belonged to a 36-year-old bloke. So I'm glad that they found her. And let's just hope that she's okay, you know. Rightio. Now, this is good. This tide line's come right in. We've actually cast about 15 feet into the salt here, so I'm hoping now we'll start getting some fish. Come on, that's come right in. So the tide's well and truly on its way in. Oh, Mark, it's unbelievable. Wow, Alex. Yeah, me too, sugar honey, because, yeah, you know, there's lots and lots of... Um, Ah, uh, see, that's the thing. Oh, 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 come on. That was a good little bite. Come on. That's a bit better. Yeah, now this salt is coming in and starting to fill up this little area. So. And this is the good thing about WA, especially the southwest of the WA. I'm the only one fishing. There's miles and miles and miles that I can see. Right, right out to the mouth here, everything. No one else is fishing. Oh, I love it. You know, so. I mean, not that there's much point at the moment. There's no fish, but we're going to change baits in a second. We're going to go from prawns to um, muley, and then we'll see what happens there, eh? Muleys catch everything, fam. A lot of people don't believe me when I say it, but muleys catch everything. You'll catch brim, you'll catch whiting, you'll catch skippy, flathead, flounder, salmon, tailor, the whole lot. They all love it. White bait's a better bait, but I don't have any, so I'm going to go and check out the shop in a little bit. Right, so more weed. Get out of there, come on. I know for a fact that the tide is a little ways off yet. Okay. That's better. Now I can see where that water's coming in. All right. So the good thing about this is, with this salt water being in, right, we don't have to try and cast as far. So we know that prawn's not really doing it today. So what we'll do is we'll give it one more chance. Oh, that's exactly right, X-ray specialist punk, but, you know, 
as Alex said, he lived seven minutes from the parents. So, I mean, I'm sorry, but that might be a bit premeditated, you know, and anyway, it's probably not our place to comment, but yes, I totally agree. I'm glad that she's been found and I hope that she's okay and nothing untoward happened to her, you know? That's terrible, absolutely terrible. Right. Right, a lot of the weed is getting swept out to the edges. Let's go. That's the best cast of the day, fam. Look how much line we've taken off that qualia reel. They cast so well. Right, let's go. Let's wait for our first bite. It's nice to just chill out. You know, a little bit of streaming catch up with the community. Oh, that's exactly right, Mark. And look, people, thank you very much. We hit 1,600 subscribers on YouTube this week. And, uh... I think in the next five or six full streams we do, we could end up getting partnered, which is pretty good. So, okay, so now the water's changed again. Now what we've got is this ripple effect in here. So the salt is really starting to come in, fam. <laughs> PJ, how are you, mate? Welcome, bud. What's going on? Don't upset Reynolds, mate. He'll wreck you. All right, it'll wreck you. <laughs> Welcome, PJ. It's just nice, the fresh air. You know, so calm with the inlet. Beautiful. That's the way. So, what I've got here is, because we've got four ounces of lead on the end, which is about the limit of this rod. What I'm doing is I'm holding the fishing rod just shy of vertical, like that. So what'll happen is with the tension that's in the line from the braid not having any stretch and the fluorocarbon having a bit of stretch, right? If a fish does hit, it'll set the hook itself, you know? <laughs> well, Pyrus, you need to bow in the presence of royalty. That's all I'm saying, and that's all I'm gonna throw out there, okay? Just bow in the presence of royalty, mate. You know it, all right? Every day you look at him and go, I wish I was as smart as him. I hear it in your voice. It's just a fact of life, another unwritten rule. And now that we've sorted it out, PJ, let's move on. So. Mark, I'm using Fireline. I managed to find some old 300 metre spools in a tackle store. This is just the 20 pound, um, the black Fireline. I've got the fluoro green as well. I like Fireline, I reckon it's good, you know. Vult, good morning, how are you pal? Welcome to the stream. Okay, this is where I've always fished. Morning, Morning mate, how are you? Hello, puppy. <laughs> oh, no, I do a little um, YouTube channel. So um, we've just moved across from another platform, so we live stream it. Just trying to promote WA and fishing and ethical fishing practices and everything. So yeah, but um, yeah, all good fun, you know. 
a lot of people like to go out and get smashed. I like to turn the camera on, mate. It's a good trade, you know? <laughs> Less of a hangover the next day, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's good dog beach down here, isn't it? Oh, lovely part of the world, mate. If I could figure out how to make a pod to tow this stuff, I'd be out there in there just trying to catch those big tailor that are coming in out of the ocean there, you know? But anyway. Oh, yeah, there is. And the good thing about the tailor when they come in, the Mulloway follow as well. So it's all relative. This is a beautiful part of the world. Oh, you can't beat it. Hopefully no one finds out about it, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I've caught nothing, so I'm doing the right thing. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. See you, mate. Twenty-eight beach worms. Hopefully you can change that into some fish, mate. Excellent. We don't get as many beach worms here, or we don't get any really, uh, like they do over east, so. Now this is interesting, we've got a very strong west-northwesterly coming in. So, it's the same old story with fishing fam, you've got to work with the conditions to your advantage. Now with a west-northwesterly, we do one of two things, we either move upstream and there's a little sheltered spot that we can fish, or we can move further out in the ocean, I'll get the Calcutta out, and there's a little cove here that you can fish in a west-northwesterly, and a lot of the pink snapper come in close. Now at the moment there is a uh, demersal ban, Right, but I mean, you know, if you fish them and you catch them, you let them go, so. A lot of water coming in. We cast over here, and now our rig's over here, so. Oh, that's right, uh, Vult, because they'd probably eat you. Not really holding bottom at all. That's how much water's coming in here at the moment, yeah? Right. You sort him out, sugar honey, you know he cringes whenever you're around. Because sugar honey's the boss. Isn't that right, Culp? No, we're not holding bottom. Ugh. Might go and get the cow cutter out and put on our four ounce. So what's happening is, fam, right, we've got our sinkers out here and that sort of stuff. And then as the weed hits the sinker, it moves it with the current. So the one time that we um, got the bite was when we landed in a clean spot before the weed hit it. So this is an absolute clump of weed here. The only way we're really going to do this is if we move. But anyway, we'll just see how we go. And this west northwesterly is not really doing us any favours. So what I have here is an absolutely huge clump of weed. I know a little spot further upstream where it curves around and the weed hits this point and keeps heading out and it doesn't like build up in the area. We're not gonna get any bites while we have all this weed on here. I don't know whether you can hear this real sort of straining under the weight from this weed. Okay. I think I just found my new hairstyle. Look at the size of this clump. As soon as the bait moved, I knew that we'd been clumped with the weed. Now I'm hoping that our baits aren't intertwined with this. Yeah, well I hoped wrong. Come on. That's it, get off there. It will clear up though. Okay. Don't <laughs> worry about that, mate. And she's got the backup with Bricklayer and Hitman. No, not Bricklayer, Hitman. Sorry, what was saying? Hitman probably was a Bricklayer. Yeah, usually culpable. Even you are smart enough to realise that when it comes to the, uh, the uh, sport known as courting, in your case. If the partner's name is Hitman, stay away. There's your life tip for today, Culp. Okay, so we tried coral prawns, no cigar. 
what we'll do is now get a couple of bits of uh, muay. <laughs> it certainly did culpable, but I'll leave you to wallow in that one, mate. It's up to you. Choice is yours, Colt. Ah, uh, no. No. You're not a pet. You're a wild animal. No, don't you start your stuff on me. Don't you start. Not interested in anything you've got to squawk. All right. Yes. Go out and get a job. Right? That's all I'm going to say. All right, famo, we had no joy with the prawn. So now we're going to go with the bait that we normally start, which is the muley. Let's hope that it can stay on there. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything culpable, all right, in fear that I might incriminate you. Rightio. Couple of bits of muley. Good work. Oh, that's not good. All right. The only reason he said that, Sugar Honey, was he's just a mad Elvis fan. You know, that's what he had playing in the background. And as always, you leave him speechless. Might get some soft plastics out at the minute. Nothing's working. <sighs> Tipsy Max, g'day. Whoops. So which stream did it put me in? I've got two of them going at the moment. Really? Oh, God. That's not the one. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, our mods are adults, people. They really are. Oh, shit. Hang on, fam. Got a guy in a boat hugging the shore. Alright boys, you could have gone on the other side of the sandbank, but don't worry about that, that's alright. Oh dear, culpable, look at you, culpable. Ah, he thought of the submarine line all himself, ah, oh, good boy. I'll tell you, sometimes I wonder. Go again with the muley. <sighs> yeah, Culpable's nickname was Dancing Queen when he was younger. He could bust a move, those hips don't lie, do they, Culpable? No. Don't be deceived, sugar honey. Underneath that rather pleasant librarian exterior lies a beast waiting to come out. There you go. Hey. Sits there with his flares from the 80s, with his ghetto blaster, walking down the main street, just pumping out Abba flat out like he doesn't care. That's our culp. On your culp. Well done. Agnatha? Okay. Tell ya. Well, there we go. So much for the best laid plans sort of thing. I think what we're going to have to do, Famo, is... Hmm. Interesting. 
The only problem is I've got too much stuff to carry. I should have brought the bloody trolley. I knew I forgot something. I forgot the trolley. Yes, I agree, sugar honey. And just before you type that comment, I could have sworn I heard the sound of a gun cocking. Okay. Oh, rightio, there was our first bump. Now that was a bump, that wasn't a bite. So there's either a school or something swimming through and brushing on the line, or I don't know what's happening. <whistles> See? Culpable mentions Abba and I hear Waterloo all over again. I can't get that song out of my head once I hear it. Oh man. It's like a Swedish Michael Bolton. Yes, Culpable, we know how that works. You get there. Sorry, Agnetha. <laughs> I can't pay my rent. Oh, really, Culpable? Assume the position. That's what that comes down to. Okay, I'm on my knees and I'm begging for forgiveness now. Now what? Yeah. <laughs> See, Pyrus, you don't get this sort of comedy on other streams. Exactly right. You come here, someone says one word, and there's a flow-on effect, Pyrus. You can't buy that. You've either got it, or you haven't. It's a bit like my hair. You know what I mean? Sugar honey, shouldn't you sort of like, um, <laughs> you know what I mean? So you probably should have asked something like, you know, are you a quarterback or a receiver? <laughs> ah... <laughs> oh dear now mods please seriously that's why you have horses culpable you know all right See, Aussie Welsh, that's good, clean banter. Not too smutty, not too li librarian-like. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, this has been terrible this morning, fam. Absolutely terrible. It's now nine o'clock. Still haven't caught anything. Time to make a move, I think. All right, so this is the situation. High tide today is gonna to be about 11 o'clock. Right, and I have a blaring west-northwesterly, just bam, straight in the face, right? Oh, that's exactly right, Aussie Welsh, you know, and it's not a bad thing, as long as it's not too vulgar, you know, and I mean, yeah, just, no, I don't know. Being able to, like that, you know, just, uh, yeah. Highbrow humour's hilarious. It's just a derivative of the old English comedy, you know? Righto, fam. Well, look, this is what we're going to do, okay? Right. 
Oh dear. Yeah, but culpable. See, that's the difference here. If we're going to use the horse analogy, sugar honey's a filly and you're a Clydesdale. You know what I mean? You know? Just... That's, yeah, I know what you mean, culpable. I just explained it for everyone. All right, fair boy. So, mission aborted. Right, although, oh, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hooks are just starting to come up clean. <laughs> Shetland pony. Mark, Shetland ponies are angry little bastards. Seriously, just angry. That's one of the few animals that's bitten me in my lifetime. And I tell you, if I could have grabbed it by the throat, I would have, oh, I was going to kill it. It's like something out of a movie, you know. I go, oh, look at the nice little horse. Put my hand through there, you give it the pat, and it just runs up and goes, chonk. It's like, you're meant to be a fucking herbivore. What are you doing? Righto, fam. Alex, how are you, mate? That's old news. Alex, that was back in June, buddy. Have no interest in that platform anymore for what, whatever reason, pal. So, YouTube it is, bud. Yeah. Do with the coffee, sharpen the senses. Hey, Mr. Seagull. What are you doing, bud? Yeah, it's over there. Seagulls. Really? Culpable resembles a Shetland. Oh, I'm glad I stopped what I was going to say there. Whoo, I still thought it, though. Oh, you're welcome, Alex, mate. Look, with Twitch, mate, the best thing that happened with Twitch was the leak. Seriously. It exposed so many streamers for what they are on there. Right? And, um, yeah, I left a long time ago. Yeah, I don't like the direction of the platform. And uh, YouTube feels like home, mate. It's obviously got a long way to go with the live streaming because my streaming is in front of a computer with um, YouTube IRL. It's sort of a bit of an unknown. And fortunately, the fishing streamers are at the forefront of that. A lot of good Aussie streamers out there like uh, Robbie Fishing and Rocket. Obviously, the Young Bloods, who are some of the most recognisable streamers in the whole world. You know, but they don't really stream. They do more VODs. So... Oh, now look how this is cleaned up, famo. Now see how this is all clear now? This means the salt's coming in. Right, so we're good, okay? This was all murky before, and it was dirty and brown and everything from the fresh water. So the salt's come in, it's filled up. The only problem is we've got a bit of weed and that sort of stuff. So, let's go. Nice flat cast. Off you go there, pal. Right, now we should hopefully get some fish. See how it's all clear and glassy and everything? Ah. <laughs> Culpable as small horse complex. <laughs> X-ray specialist hunk. I, uh, hunk, punk. Sugar honey calls him hunk. I really appreciate your intellectual humour. It is fantastic. I didn't even think of that. And I am a sicko. What was your um, username on the old platform, Alex? Cartoon head, speaking of legends, the mood of the stream will increase now that you're in here. Now, culpable, <laughs> oh, seriously, if culpable was here and he said, oh, no, I'm a pony, oh, I would roll around in there laughing and not care. Seriously. Yes. Cartoon head, personality plus. Cartoon head, you should have 100,000 followers on Twitch, mate. 
you know. Oh, you're always in the mood, cartoon head. Okay, you're always in the mood. I tell you what, I'm in the mood for catching some fish, but it's not bloody happening, is it? What was that song, I'm in the mood for dancing and romancing? I can't remember the title of it. Getting all these flashbacks to music from the 60s and 70s. Yes, culpable, hopefully. <laughs> That's it. All right, we're going to move upstream in a minute, fam. Oh, there was our first bite. No, second bite. We've had one bite already. I still think they're a little ways off, personally. I should have brought the long range gear, but hey, should have, would have, could have. Hello, baby blue from heaven. How are you, mate? I certainly am culpable. I'm cartoon head. I'm old. The older I get, the better I was. I just can't figure out why there's whiting on in here, fam. I think this might be still a bit too much fresh water, don't know, but this is cleared up, so it's salt. As the Russians say, Nietzsche. You just saw what happened. Might have to get the Calcutta out later, fam, with a few unweighted muleys and try and ping some tailor over near the island there. Oh, I could do with a coffee. That's one essential food group I had this morning. When I go to a service station, fam, I go there to buy fuel. I don't go there to buy coffee. And when I do, as a rule of thumb, I leave disappointed because they don't serve coffee through the Bowsers. There's a message there. That's right, because they're there to serve fuel. Tell ya, it's a tough gig. Oh, no, I'm sorry to hear that, baby blue. Now, that's either a drone or a brush cutter. If it's a drone, I'm going to try and blast it out of the sky with a cast. All right, let's see how we go. Any survey coffee? Well, look, cartoon head. If it's not good enough for the cockroaches, it's not good enough for your brother, all right? Just tell them. Don't put up with that. Tuh, disgusting. All right, famo, so now look. What's happened is our hooks are starting to come up clean of weed. That means the fresh water's been pushed back and the salt water's come in. So now we should start catching some fish. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to cast this out and leave the bait out here attached to the chair and then I'm going to start fishing some soft plastics. Right, excellent. Now that's a great cast. Right. There we go. I'm going to leave that there, that'll let us know. And what we'll do is we'll set up the other rod for some soft plastics. Okay. Let's leave that there. Patience is the key, apparently. I didn't realize my chair could be a uh, rod holder as well. All right, so. Soft plastics is the name of the game. Although we should probably, no, I'll use soft plastics on here. Now that this is cleared up, we can use the soft plastics. So, let's get going. Uh, Yeah, well, I reckon drone fishing is going to be one of the things that ruins fishing from now on. You know, and if you're going to spend that much money on a drone, you may as well spend it on a um, car, you know. That's good. I 
All right, so. Oh, well, that's right, Alex, you know. I mean, the classic was when we had that person in the stream trying to rip me about not using the drone, and then I caught that snapper from the beach. <laughs> Mate, and I went to town on that one, I give you the tip. Oh, yeah, I don't need to use a drone, because I can cast far enough from the beach. Which is an absolute knob comment, but it was called for, you know. Rightio, so... Yeah, culpable, stop it. Stop it. One thing that is really disappointing over the last few years, fam, is the drop in quality of terminal tackle. A lot of people say you don't know what you're talking about. But what I've had to resort to, are oh, you kidding? What I've had to resort to, right, is I've had to resort to buying, I've had to resort to buying like crane swivels and then buying cross lock snaps to put onto the crane swivels. That's how bad it's getting, you know? So. Oh dear, sugar honey, have you been drinking again? What did I tell you? Right, what did I tell you, sugar honey? Yes. I tell you. <coughs> Jimbo coming in with the big ones. Jimbo, Jimbo turn. <laughs> hey mate, how you going? Nah. Don't know what's going on. I'm going to get some soft plastics out, see if there's any tailor out there or skippy or maybe some juvenile Australian salmon. Right. So, yeah. So, no other king George in? Nah, normally you get them over the other side. Yeah. I was going to bring the, um, the uh, kayak down. I might do that tomorrow. I've been here before and, you know, admittedly years ago caught and released over 200 fish in a day, so... But uh, those days are gone, I think. Uh, I thought, well, I'll come back and see. Well, there's, there's a bit more water in, but... Uh... Yeah, I don't think anything's going to happen for another hour. They'll come in, they'll get on the bite, and they'll leave. You know, and that's just how it goes, you know. So we just got to be here when it gets on the bite, you know what I mean? Timing's everything with the tide and that. we got the right moon phases with the new moon and that, so all good. But that's fishing. So if you don't find fish here, you move and find somewhere else. <laughs> With this west northwesterly, I might move up around the corner and just ping some um, light dead weight um, muleys out. And I've got some slices and soft plastics. So yeah, one of those things. But hey, we're fishing, which is better than a lot of other things, isn't it? Yes. yes. Beautiful sea, lovely breeze, makes you feel alive. Good stuff. Did you hear any news this morning? Oh, a gentleman told us about that young girl that yes. got found, which is good. That's worth getting up to, if nothing else. Oh, well, that's right, mate. Yeah. Just, um, the sad thing is it happened in the first place, sir. But, you know, intent's one of those things, isn't it? How do you gauge it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So how do you gauge the intent, sir? But very suspicious circumstances, wasn't it? Well, yes, yeah. Oh yeah. Interesting. They've got the only real news they've got is just been found. Yes, that's uh, right, sir. Uh, an hour-long program on TV talking about it. <laughs> oh yeah, but I mean, ultimately, sir, that's you know, I mean, they should respect the parents too. You know, they're going through enough as it is, and um, yeah, so. Anyway. Beg your pardon. No, what it is, no, what, what you got here, see, is, um, see where that little bay goes round? Yep. When the water roars in from the ocean on the high tide when it comes in, it sort of hits there and gets directed out there. 
So it takes a while for it to fill up and then push all the fresh out because normally the fresh sits on top of the salt because okay. the salt's uh, denser or whatever it is. So now that this is all cleared up, we've got predominantly um, more, uh, what do you call it, like uh, salt in here, yeah. but we're still not getting bites and that sort of stuff. So I don't know what's going on, but when the whiting come in, they'll come in and just go whammo. They'll be on the bite for an hour or two, then they'll disappear with the tide, you know? So I'm gonna go upstream and chase some brim and that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah so all good fun. Yes, yep. As long as you recorded all. Oh yeah, this is all live, sir. Oh, so we're, we're now out there. Oh yeah, it's being streamed all over the world, sir. So we have, um, we've got like a microphone that links links to that. There's Wi-Fi down there. Probably going to die from cancer from too much Wi-Fi, but hey, you know. And um, yeah, but it's all good fun. Yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I'd wait for a little while, mate. Yeah. You know, like I said to you, they'll, they'll turn up and then it'll just be BAM and then they'll just disappear but you've got to be here, you know. So that's the key. You've got to be in the right spot at the right time with a lot of things in life, sir. Just had a uh, message from my friend down in Albany. Yep. And uh, the forecast is for strong winds all next week. Yeah, the only real um, respite we're going to get from that is tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning there's going to be very gentle west northwesterlies. And then, um, yeah, there's just going to be flat out as it is. So, got to be able to get in there and fish when you can, you know. Right, and I'm going to use this northwester to my advantage and hopefully get a few soft plastics in. Let's just get that going there. The only thing that turns me off about soft plastics is when the fish eat them, they can't digest them. So, there's a lot of fish mortality with soft plastics. They are making them out of gelatine now in some parts of Europe. So hopefully they'll hit the market sooner than later. Yeah, because it poisons them. They've done a lot of studies in the States on their freshwater fish. So... so what weight's head are you using it? Oh, this one's only about a sixteenth of an ounce, but with this wind I can hopefully work that. So let's see how we go. See what yeah, that's right. That's woeful. Right, so the wind grabbed that pretty quickly. So what I'm going to do is, here they are, ba ba ba. Knew I had them somewhere, that's better. That's a half ounce, is it though? Yeah, that's a much bigger head. Right. Yeah. Okay, let's try that. I might do though. Oops, let's bring these in. Still no bites. That's a bit too big. That might be the go, I think. Now let's go with the lime green head. Yeah, it's a bit of a trade off with the hooks in the old days with the jig heads. A lot of the lighter sizes had smaller hooks on them. Now a lot of them are still really big, you know what I mean? So... Alright, let's get this... Let's get this soft plastics in. Yeah, I think I might head up to the trees, I think. And just move up about 15 or 20 k's out of this wind because it's going to be sort of good brim weather you know what I'm saying but whew, lucky I don't have any hair that's right yeah it's not that sn you too sir have a lovely day safe trip all right famo so what we've got is we've got that left in there not getting any bites or anything like that so what we're going to do now is we're just going to put on a soft plastic. Right, we're going to flick that around. I like to keep busy when I'm fishing. I don't like to sit there, you know. No, that's not right. Come on. No, you're meant to be on here. As you can see, this uh, wind's starting to come up. That's why I think we should move up a little bit more um, sort of 
inland and try and get onto some of these um, rim that are in here. I'm going to use a fluoro yellow head and a pumpkin seed body. I don't like soft plastics, I'm just using it. So that we've got something to do while we're waiting for a bite with the bait. Let's give this a cast. So with soft plastics, when you fish them, you cast them out, let them hit the bottom. And then what you do is you just wind it slow enough so the tail wiggles. You don't want to do it too quick. So just like I said, wind it slow enough so the tail wiggles. Right, and then hopefully that brings them in. How'd you go, mate? Good? Yeah, lovely. Yeah, 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 no fish. Are they still fishing out in the water over there? I saw a few people wading out there to the island there. Are they still fishing out there? Oh, no, I didn't see them. Oh, okay. I might head out there later, but the only problem is... Yeah. yeah, there's a couple of spots down there. So I'm just trying to get here because this is traditionally where all the whiting hang out, you know? Eh? Hey? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, for Evo, we're going to move. When we move, I might turn the stream off because we're going to have to drive. You're not allowed to have the phone on while you're driving. What I'm going to do is try and get further around the corner so that this northwesterly wind is over our like back helping us with our cast. And this is a good thing about the south coast of WA. Depending what the winds are doing, you can usually find somewhere where you can work with the wind in your favour. So, but this is very poor here. We haven't caught anything. I'm surprised my hat's still on because it's still trying to blow off, you know. With, uh... Oh, there we are. Whoops. With soft plastics, you've got to match the weight of the head to the gear that you're using and the tails that you're using. Right, if you have it too light, you find it hard to cast, you'll get bird's nests, even with thread lines. Okay. So... It's the same old story fam, you just got to match the gear for what you're doing, you know. Last time we came to this spot, this is the spot that we had in our um, YouTube highlights 
where the fish got chased out of the water and ended up between our legs. So, there's not even any salmon in here, you know what I mean? Wait, what happened there? I had a knot that got caught on the guides. Let's try here. That's better. Might have to get some super glue on that later, I think. Mean. That is absolutely terrible. All right, Famo, so this is what we're gonna do, okay? We are going to move upstream and get out of this wind. And in the meantime, I'm gonna grab a coffee. So, please stick around. We'll be live within about 15 to 20 minutes. But I think one of the better options today is we'll head about 20 k's upstream and just fish for brim in the river because we'll have a much better chance of doing that than trying to achieve what we're trying to achieve here, right? So please stay tuned. I'll be back in about 15 minutes. I'll restart the stream and we'll work from there.